Natural light, streaming through a window and diffusing across a workspace, there is no better light. And daylight is free. On schedule, it arrives each day at no charge to the user. But even the best building designs must come face to face with a harsh reality. Daylight is not constant. The sun moves across the sky. Clouds roll in. Fog builds up. And ultimately, the sun sets. Daylight needs a backup. But electric light costs money. The problem for building owners is how to provide quality light at minimum operating cost. The Lighting Design Lab's mock-up room helps building owners find solutions to this problem. Today's technology makes possible dramatic improvements in the energy efficiency of lighting systems. State-of-the-art lighting offers twice the efficiency of conventional lighting. Whether the problem is retrofitting an existing building or designing a new building, the fundamental issue is the same. How to balance energy efficiency with the fact that people need quality light to perform tasks. Let's start with the question, what is quality light? There are three factors, light level, comfort, and color. First, light level. If the light level is too low or too high, people simply cannot perform tasks effectively. The second factor that affects people's perceptions about the quality of light is comfort. Glare or harsh shadows in the lighting environment are uncomfortable. The third factor affecting the quality of light is color. Different light sources create different perceptions of color in a lighting environment. With these concepts in mind, let's now ask the question, how can lighting energy costs be controlled without compromising the quality of light? Energy is factored into a lighting environment in several ways. First, there is power, measured in watts. The electrical power required to light a space is simply the sum of the wattages of all the lamps and ballasts in the space. A second factor that contributes to energy consumption is the length of time the lights are on. The amount of energy consumed is simply power times time. A third factor to consider is heat. Light produces heat. Reducing the power and operating time of the lighting system can reduce the energy needed for cooling. Good energy efficient lighting design creates first a quality lighting environment that people find comfortable for performing a given task, and second, a lighting system that results in a minimum amount of power and energy consumption. The mock-up room can illustrate how these two goals can be accomplished. The architectural and lighting elements of this workspace can be quickly changed. The impact of each change on the light level and power requirements will be illustrated with two meters that will appear at the bottom of the video screen. One meter shows light level on the work table. The other meter shows the electrical power being used. In this first scenario, the workspace has a window along one wall. If the work table is located next to the window, the sky conditions often provide sufficient light at the work surface. No electricity for light is required for the worker to do his or her work. The mark on the light level meter below indicates this minimum requirement. If the work table is moved back into the space 25 feet, the light level drops below the minimum required for the worker. The table is outside what is called the daylight perimeter zone, so electric light is required. In most buildings, the perimeter zone is 15 to 20 feet deep. If rooms are arranged to take advantage of this daylight zone, occupants perceive a high-quality lighting environment and the energy efficiency of the lighting system improves. Making natural light effective inside the perimeter zone takes careful design. Direct sunlight should normally be avoided because of glare and solar heat gains. North-facing windows escape both of these problems. South-facing windows provide useful natural light when direct sunlight is diffused with architectural features or special glazing. East and west windows create the most problems for daylight design because of the low sun angles. Each building orientation requires appropriate daylighting design solutions. Room proportions also affect light levels. This designer's studio is set up with a high ceiling, incandescent track lighting overhead, and a task light. Note the power level needed to meet the minimum light level. By lowering the ceiling, the fixtures are unchanged, but the light level increases. 
Now, fewer fixtures are needed to meet the designer's requirements and less power is being used. The color and texture of room surfaces also affect light level. By changing the wall color to white, the light level increases and again the wattage can be reduced. The color of room surfaces also influences the contrast ratio of the visual field. If the window is framed with dark walls and dark trim, the view out the window is uncomfortable because of the high contrast between the window and the interior surfaces. Change the surfaces to a light color and the contrast is reduced. The view is now much more pleasing. These changes illustrate how required light levels and quality of light can be maintained and energy efficiency improved by considering room proportions, layout, and color characteristics in the design of spaces. The next step is to compare different luminaires for lighting effectiveness and energy performance. With incandescent track lighting from the ceiling and the task light on the work surface, the light level can be maintained at the required level even if daylight is not available. However, this same light level can be achieved with fewer watts. Replacing the track lights with standard fluorescent troughers with T12 lamps results in a significant power reduction for the same amount of light, but there is a trade-off. Common fluorescent lamps produce light with a higher color temperature than incandescents, and the color rendering index is lower compared to natural or incandescent light. A graphic designer may require better color quality. This color trade-off can be overcome and even higher efficiency achieved with state-of-the-art fluorescent lamps called T8s. These lamps look like the traditional fluorescent but are smaller in diameter. Improved phosphor technology produces more lumens per watt and better color rendering qualities. Plus, they give off less heat than the T12s, which reduces cooling loads. Two functions of a fixture are to direct light outward from the luminaire and to control glare. The track lights produce a crude, bright light that caused shadows and glare. No diffusers or lenses were present to soften the light. In addition to energy-efficient lamps, new luminaires offer advanced optical and light diffusing features. A well-designed, state-of-the-art fixture will help eliminate glare and shadows in the environment and improve light distribution. This fixture can also be used with energy-efficient ballasts. A ballast modifies the electrical current to match the particular needs of the lamp. Ballasts themselves use some energy. Electronic ballasts are the most efficient type of ballast available, and many models allow dimming. This capability improves the energy benefits of daylighting. A photocell control mounted near the work table controls the ceiling luminaires. The dimmable ballast allows this control to reduce or increase power to the lights depending upon the level of daylight sensed by the photocell. So during the daylight hours, the light level from the overhead luminaires varies with the sky conditions. When daylight is available, the photocell reduces power and causes the overhead lights to dim. By combining the benefits of room structural modifications, the upgraded luminaires, and the daylight controls, the energy efficiency of the lighting design for the studio has improved considerably. Each modification maintained the recommended 50-foot candle light level while allowing for a decrease in electricity consumption. Greater savings could be achieved by choosing luminaires with even higher lumen per watt ratios. High intensity discharge, or HID lamps, such as compact metal halide sources, produce from 60 to 80 lumens per watt. These lamps are a good choice for certain tasks. The problem with most HIDs for a design studio is color. As always, the light must be matched to the task. The studio illustrates how the relative importance of color rendering in a lighting environment affects decisions about energy efficiency. Even with this limitation, the possibilities for energy efficiency in the studio are dramatic. The cumulative effect of all these applications is a lighting environment that can maintain the recommended light level of 50 foot candles while using less than half the power to light the studio in a more traditional way. And the electrical consumption would also drop by over 50%. Not only is the studio more energy efficient, it also has high quality light. Daylight is a major light source. Glare and shadows are reduced. Light distribution is enhanced. 
Color characteristics are excellent. This example of energy efficient lighting design has not shown all of the technologies or opportunities available to designers, but it has shown a process that can be applied to almost any lighting situation, either for new or existing buildings. So when natural light needs a backup, today's advanced lighting products and design options make possible the best of two worlds, both high quality and energy efficient lighting.